Hmm, wow. This thing really is built pretty well. Cool. Well, hey everybody. Daniel here from Basement Tech. A little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Thanks for 400 plus subscribers. I know it's not 4,000 or 400,000 like some, but for me, 400 is pretty darn good. And thanks to you for subscribing and watching. Regarding the project, you might notice the phase converter, rotary phase converter proof of concept from the last video is all disassembled. And I think I have the guys from Phasematic to blame for that. Let me tell you why. Well, after my last video, I gave them a call and I said, hey, did I get the facts about your device and rotary phase converters about right? And after a little Q&A with um, a really um, informative guy named Jeremy, informative and super helpful, um, we determined, yeah, hey, I got it about right. He watched the video, said we really like your video here at Phasematic, but the particular device that you featured is kind of ancient history. How about as a thank you, we send you a new device, um, no strings attached. So I think um, uh, YouTube etiquette requires me to say they did send me this new device free of charge, no strings attached. But I think it's worth talking about uh, in a new video. So I want to do that, um, fill in some gaps regarding that device, but also build up a rotary phase converter that I am comfortable putting on the, um, the factory floor, if you will, in the Zim knife shop. And you can see I've kind of started to lay that out here. So without further ado, let's get into it. The usual cautions and warnings. This project involves mains power, 220 volts out of the wall. That will kill you. If you're not comfortable with those, the concepts that are involved here or the safety measures that are required, please seek help from a, from a qualified electrician or other professional who's knowledgeable in these matters. Secondly, as I said in the last video, I'm building this up out of parts I have in my junk box, so you may choose different parts. Um, final note, there are tons of great videos, and I'm going to put a link and or um, a uh, icon here in the video showing a couple of those that I thought were particularly good. Some are super technical, and you might like that. Others are just, hey, how do I build a rotary phase converter? So I'll put a couple of those uh, throughout the video here and or at the end, and you can check those out if you want. Let's get to it. The Phasomatic documentation actually describes two different ways to use the device, so-called method one and method two, both which actually resolve to the same function. A three-phase motor requires all three phases to know which direction to spin on startup. The Phasomatic device temporarily generates a third phase from the two wires that come out of a two-wire 220 outlet or circuit in order to help a three-phase motor get started. That motor could be the actual motor under load in, say, a three-phase air compressor or a three-phase table saw, in which case you'll get about two-thirds of the rated horsepower when the temporary third phase is removed. It could also be an idler motor, like what we're building here, in which case when the temporary phase is removed, the motor, the idler motor will generate all three phases and that three phase power can be sent to a motor under load where you will get full rated horsepower. Regarding the history and lineage of uh, this device, th this is the one I showed the insides of last time and I noted I harvested a few parts out of this. This uh, was the 2007, there's a little date code down here that you might be able to see, 2007, so in fact it is ancient history. The one that I actually had wired in was this one. Now the insides are a bit cleaner. Of course I looked inside. And it utilizes a more of a contactor-like device as opposed to that encapsulated relay in the last one. And that's from say 2013, I think the date code said on the inside. But notice this is an aluminum box, kind of a bud box, project box. And most of the parts are kind of more off the shelf. Now moving to the new one, which I'm really impressed with, and it really does deserve that wow from the um, opening comment, it's this. You can see it's a bit bigger, and um, but the box itself is a heavy gauge steel, and I would have no issue putting this in um, in a, you know our shop or a factory environment or your shop. Um, note right off the bat too, 
Um, the terminal strip is enhanced with two extra terminals that allows me just to put one wire under each one. In the old, one, um, old ones that I used, I had to put two wires. Um, and notice too those um, substantial grounding lugs, uh, top left and top right, that I'll be able to use to get a super good um, a ground on this device. Probably the most significant thing to note are these two letters down here, UL. Um, and I suspect some of the changes here were to support um, that listing. The, the new model, or not new, the current model of the device is UL listed as it says. Um, you might have noticed too, this um, junction box part of the enclosure is uh, super roomy and that will allow me to make a really nice and neat job um, rewiring this uh, rotary phase converter, reconfiguring even for uh, something put on the, on the shop uh, at Zim Knives. All right, well, here are most of the mechanical components um, mounted up. Wasn't that the proof of concept was particularly physically unfit, but obviously there were just too many exposed wires to have it out in the wild. Um, one thing that was kind of keeping me um, from moving forward on the project was not wanting to spend, honestly, $50 or so on one of these, 50 or $60 on one of these big PVC um, electrical boxes at the big box store. So I happened to find um, this one, which was secondhand through kind of a happenstance piece of equipment that failed. So it does have uh, pretty many holes in it, but I think I can um, take care of those with uh, various means that you'll see as we move forward. I did say I was going to ask a couple of questions. One major one is um, a lot of the rotary phase converter implementations on the web use um, starter capacitors, and that's essentially what the phase-o-matic provides to us to generate a third leg to get that three-phase motor spinning. There are also, in a lot of implementations, run capacitors, which, as I understand it, are used to balance, and I'm put the word in quotes because that's what everybody uses, balance the three phases coming back from the idler motor so that the load motor, in this case, that could be represented by this three-phase buffer down here, sees uh, a nice balanced three-phase and apparently does not overheat. If you have more experience than I do along these lines, tell me if you think I'm missing something by not having those output capacitors to balance the, um, the three phases coming out. All wired up and ready to show you. As I mentioned at the outset, much of the physical manifestation here of this, um, of this circuit provided by a Phasomatic is based on the components I had in hand. So um, you may choose to use different components and yours may look different, but hopefully behave as well as this one does. Um, major difference between this and the proof of concept are two. Uh, one is once all the covers are on, so this box will be covered up this box has its cover and the phase has its uh, cover. There will be no exposed terminals, so I'm comfortable putting this uh, into the wild, if you will. Um, I thought it might be uh, useful for continuity um, and running the risk of repeating myself from the last video to just kind of do a how does the power flow through this thing. So over there on the wall, I have a 220 20 amp uh, twist lock, and that's where the power comes into this one through that plug sitting down there through this SO cord. It comes into this box, which is just a simple two pole uh, 20 amp breaker. And I um, repurposed the common bus, if, if you will, just as a little ground bus down there. And uh, that served me well to run a couple ground wires, which you'll see throughout. Power comes in on the SO cable through this breaker and then goes out this conduit. All the wires actually end up going out. That's the path into the big gray box is through this way. So I was really thrilled to have the generous amount of space that Phasomatic in this new version provides over here. Both the amount of space and all separate terminals, so no doubling up in there. Uh, two pairs of red and black wires carry the 220 out of the wall. Um, one pair goes here into the Phasomatic on the outside terminals, and the other pair flows through the same a conduit and uh, powers this little transformer, which I'll mention what it does in just a minute. 
The other major difference, of course, is this new uh, Phasomatic company generously sent that to me, as I mentioned in the, uh, in the outset. I think they wanted to showcase all of the improvements they made between this and the 10 and 15 year old model, and there were quite a few. Um, so those wires flow over here, 220 into the Phasomatic. Phasomatic generates a third phase to get my idler motor uh, started, and all of those wires pass through here. Now I labeled the red and the black wires that come out of the phasomatic with that yellow tape, and the white wire is the generated phase, and I marked that with blue. It's probably a good time to mention one, one astute viewer, and I really do appreciate the comment, gave me a little bit of grief about fusing the neutral. Well, in fact, there are no neutrals in this circuit. They're all hots, if you will. Two hots coming out of the wall is the 220, and three hots coming, if you will, out of the phasomatic, the three phase that is generated. So what are these two switches? Well, phasomatic recommends once the idler motor is up and running that you switch the generated phase out of the circuit in case you put such a load on the idler motor that you could cause the phasomatic to um, switch back into its startup mode, which may be damaging for their component. Now I have seen on the web, uh, some people use a timer here and that probably does make sense, but I wanted sort of deterministic, definite control over this. So my brain, when the idler motor is fully up and running, I will switch that off. I may automate that uh, in, in the future, but uh, I think that's gonna work out fine, given that we maintain uh, close control of this. So the other switch uh, I'll mention uh, in a minute, but notice it's uh, smaller blue wires, which signify maybe a lower current. So three phases out of the phasomatic, one generated phase. The generated phase is, runs through this switch so I can pull it out of the circuit once the idler motor. And then all three of those phases end up here at the, call it the input to this big contactor. This other switch here pulls the contactor in and carries those three phases to its output terminals. The output terminals, um, carry that power in two directions. One, down to the idler motor, which is temporarily wired in. In the final reel, I'll take these three wires here and put it in this um, liquid tight, again, because I had it, and I think it'll be good just to keep dust out of the circuit if we're going to be in a sort of grinder environment. Um, the other pair comes through these fuses and out to these two outlets. As I mentioned last time, you know, why two outlets, Dan. Um, the one on the right is the bona fide three phase, call it the proper outlet, if you will. The other one is a very similar three pole with a ground. I don't think you can see it when I zoom in, but it's actually a 223 wire. In terms of current carrying capability, they're identical, but the width and exact configuration of all of these little slots is slightly different just to make sure you don't plug the wrong thing into the wrong into the the wrong power however since many people use this one on the left like this grinder that i bought with the plug already on um, i thought i would include it and at the risk of um of uh having something say wrong um plugged in there I will mark it very clearly with a um, prominent color that it's three phase, not 220. And I think that'll take care of it again, because uh, we maintain close control of this device. So we've got the power flowing in here through the phasomatic, generates the third phase through the contactor, wires go down to the motor. That's the generated phase to get it started. Once the motor is up and up and running, I switch out the generated phase from the phasomatic, and then the motor itself generates the third phase, which is carried through these fuses out to these two outlets. I hope that makes it a little bit clear. As if that wasn't long enough, one other quick note. Why do I have this transformer here? I mentioned there were a couple of pairs, uh, two pairs of wires that come out of this um, 220 breaker. One pair just routes through this conduit and ends up here at this transformer. As I mentioned in the last video, this uh, contactor has a 120 volt um, uh, coil that pulls it in uh, via this uh, switch over here. So this um, transformer 
just takes in uh, 220 volts on the right and uh, puts out 120 volts on the left that I'm using to pull that uh, contactor in. Okay, you may not have ever believed me during the video that this was actually going to happen, but this is the mythical surface grinder that I've been talking about. It has a one and a half horsepower motor built into it behind all that shrouding. And over here is a really nice um, manual motor starter. I took that apart and took a look inside. Somebody had really cleaned it up and it's in good shape. So I think we're good there. Luckily it has this very long, nice power cord that terminates in the actual proper uh, three phase three-phase outlet. So as I mentioned in a couple of times, I put both of these because sometimes people mistakenly use the bottom one, but I'll go ahead and, sorry, uh, there we go, plug that in. So this is the incarnation of what it looks like kind of all buttoned up. I still have a few things. I need a bracket and a few other things, but as I mentioned earlier also, no exposed wires here. The two switches on top are well labeled. The one on the right, remember, brings the generated phase in from the phase matic and the one on the left pulls the contactor in. And I put a big yellow note that says, turn the load off when starting to avoid damage, probably to the phase matic I'm not completely sure. So over here is kind of our standard twist lock that brings uh, 220, 20 amps uh, into, um, into this uh, rotary phase converter. The breaker switch is on, so I'll go ahead and power up the phase converter. You won't hear much, but it'll be good. So this switch is in start. That means the generated phase is making it to the motor, and this one's going to pull the contactor in. All right, so the three-phase motor, the pony motor, the idler motor, is now up and running. So I'm going to pull the generated phase out per the um, phase matic instructions. So now the motor itself is generating the third phase and delivering it to that outlet. But since following that instruction over there, I left the device turned off, it's not running yet. Let's see what happens when I push the power button down here and I'll let you view the grinder itself. Just with a little bit of slowdown on the idler motor, this is up and running. Now this grinder runs extremely smoothly, so you kind of have to believe me that it's running, but it really is. Um, so, wow, this thing actually works. Very cool. I'll show you one other try we did a little earlier, and uh, you get the idea that it actually is a rotary phase converter. Very cool. <laughs> All right. Let's see if it explodes. I have more life left to live than you. One, two, three. Oh, wow. I don't know if it's spinning in the right direction. Well, but it's spinning, though. Is it still spinning? It is, yeah. I can feel the breeze. Definitely going. It's so smooth, I can't Yeah. So there we have it. We use the current model of a phase matic device to build up a rotary phase converter that can be used to get full rated horsepower out of a three phase motor driven device. So if you like this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up. If you really, really like it, please subscribe. Talk to you next time. Thanks.